So along my journey to become a better cook, I have learned to make basic bread. And I think I'm at the point now where I need to move away from using cups to weight. And one of the great things about using weight is um, it's way more consistent. Flour, water, salt, sugar, yeast, always the same at all times. As opposed to cups, depending on how you dip that out, it could be different every time that you um, make a loaf of bread. So we are now going to make a loaf of bread purely on weights, and I developed this recipe by using baker's percentages. It's a way to ensure that you get consistent results every time that you bake a loaf of bread, as well as the ability to scale the recipe up and down and still get the same results. So join me, let's use our scale, and let's make a basic homemade sandwich bread. So over the course of my cooking journey, I have made quite a bit of bread, but I'm at the point now that I want to move from using cups to weights. And so that's what I based this recipe on. I developed this recipe using Baker's percentages, and we're going to go over using Baker's percentages in another video because it is entirely a subject of its own. What I can tell you for purposes of this um, recipe is, I'm writing it up with straight grams, so you're going to need a scale to make this um, recipe. As we move along, and once we do a video on baker's percentages, you'll understand how that works, and you can scale this recipe up and down using the percentages. I will give you the percentages why we're making this if you already understand baker's percentages, but just know that baker's percentages is just the percentage of all the other ingredients to the weight of the flour. So we're going to be measuring, we're going to be weighing the water. We're actually going to be weighing the water. We're going to be weighing the salt. We're going to be weighing the butter. We're going to be weighing everything. And the recipe is just a formula. Each one of those ingredients is, is a percentage of the weight of the flour. If you want to make it a large recipe, you just increase the amount of flour and you use the same exact percentages for each one of those ingredients in your resized recipe. That's all Baker's Percentages is. We're going to go in detail over Baker's Percentages because I am really just learning how to use the process. But I can tell you just by developing this recipe, it has changed my, the way I think about making bread. So let's get to weighing out these ingredients and making us some absolutely fantastic sandwich bread. Okay, so I have my My Way scale out here. I'll put a link to this down in the description. It does calculate baker's percentages, so it's a great scale to have in your kitchen. I've weighed out all the other ingredients, so we're just gonna be weighing the flour, and we want a hundred, 1,066 grams of flour. We're using 693 grams of water, so we, we are at a 65% hydration rate. So we're gonna go ahead and put our bowl on here. We're gonna tear out to zero to get rid of the weight of the bowl, and now we're gonna measure our flour to 1,066 grams. So what's great about this recipe is no matter what you do, you can always be sure that you're using the right amount of flour and water. 1,066. So we're ready to mix up our dough. So this is a regular bread flour. Um, I recommend using bread flour in this recipe because it has a higher protein level than regular all-purpose flour. If you're not in the U.S., I think it's usually called like a strong flour or also it's known as patent. So we're gonna go ahead and get these ingredients in the mixer and make some bread. So we're gonna be using the Hobart today. You can use any strong, heavy duty stand mixer, preferably like a bowl lift because it'll have a little bit more strength to it because um, we have quite a bit of flour. So we're gonna use 693 grams of water. Yes, I did weigh this water. This makes for a 65% 
hydrated dough, like I said. And that water's just warm, probably about 100 degrees. Um, we're gonna use nine grams of instant yeast. This is saff. Um, this is about three teaspoons um, of yeast. I just rate it out as nine grams. We are going to use 25 grams of regular white sugar. Um, this is about a 2.3% to the weight of the flour. We're gonna go ahead and, the whole part, I can usually do this on about a one. Um, my uh, yeast is a little bit cold. Uh, we're using instant yeast, so we can just go straight to it, right? So I'm putting in 37 grams of butter. This is softened butter. Um, this is about three and a half percent fat. And you can use any kind of fat. You can use olive oil, you can use canola oil, vegetable oil. I just choose to use a little butter. So we're making a 2% salt dough. This is 21 grams of salt. We're gonna wait to put that in until we put the flour in. So again, we have our 1,066 grams of bread flour here. We're just gonna start adding it in the mixer. And the Hobart can do this on uh, speed one. We're gonna put in our salt. And we're gonna let the Hobart do its thing. So the Hobart has been rocking this dough for like seven minutes and it don't even care, right? <laughs> you could let this thing go 20 minutes and it would still just be rocking it. That's a Hobart, right? A Hobart! So we're gonna give this dough a couple more minutes and then we will take it out. So the dough is looking pretty groovy. We're gonna go ahead and get it out of here. It is a little bit of a sticky dough. So a sticky dough is gonna stay on your hands a little bit, right? Usually I put a little uh, flour on the board so it'll be fine. Um, a non-sticky dough, when you touch it and pull your hands away, it won't have any, it won't leave any residue. So maybe if we use like a 55% hydration, you probably wouldn't get any residue, but I want this to be slightly sticky. So let me move this mixer. So just for giggles, let's weigh this dough. I'll put this bowl here, tear it out, tear it out, get our dough here, put it bad boy in here. Let me put this on pounds. We're exactly at four pounds of dough. So this is gonna make two two pound loaves. Um, we are dead on exactly what I wanted that to be. And that's fantastic. That's Baker's percentages, right? Amazing. So here's our dough and it's beautiful. Look at that. It, it just feels like soft, uh, a soft baby, right? Woo, it's so nice. Um, it's perfectly hydrated. When you touch it, you, you, you kind of slightly feel the wetness, but not too terrible. Um, look at how beautiful that is. So you're saying you're happy with how it kneaded. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this bowl right here. I got a little bit of this olive oil spray. This is no propellant. All that's in here is olive oil. You just wanna give it a little bit of olive oil in there so it doesn't stick. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our dough smooth side down. Then we're gonna flip it. We're just gonna put this over here. We're gonna let it rise. 
we want it to double in size. And this bowl, it's pretty much going to fill up this whole bowl. Probably take, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever. So go and have a cocktail and come back and your dough will be ready to shape. Okay, so it's been about 45 minutes and our dough is looking mighty fine. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of flour on here. Some people put a little bit of oil, but our dough is plenty sticky. So I'm going to go ahead and punch it down. We just want to get that air out of here. So uh, get our dough out. Woo! Looks pretty nice. Look at that. <laughs> That's a beautiful dough. Very beautiful dough. <laughs> we can make one big loaf of bread. So I'm just going to basically cut this in half. You can weigh it if you want to. So both of your uh, pieces of dough are the same. Um, that looks pretty close to be the same. Whoop. So. Here's our loaf pan. This is a USA pan, a uh, loaf pan. I'll put a link down in the description. And I'm just going to get this air out of this dough. And to form our loaf, it's pretty easy. I'm not going to do that much kneading. I'm not, I'm not really a big kneader. <laughs> I'm just going to flatten this dough out. I got the air out. I'm going to flatten it out so it's basically the size of the pan. Looks pretty good. You just want to get the air out. And I'm just going to roll it like a big snossage and pinch it like a big snossage. I'm going to fold the end in and just pinch it and push the end in and pinch it. So we have our beautiful loaf of bread here. We're gonna pan it and I'm just gonna press it down in here. This is gonna rise so it'll be pretty good like that. Press it on into the pan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It'll pretty much fill up that pan. We're going to take our other dough. <laughs> I'm going to just press it out. You can knead it all you want. Let's get all that air out of it. Oh, this dough feels really nice. It's perfect. Roll it into a big log. <laughs> pinch, 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 pinch. Suck the end in, pinch. Suck the end in and pinch. It's not going to be perfect. Perfect. Drop it in there. Get the loaf down in there. Mm, mm, mm. So we have one bread here. Mm. And one bread here. Looks pretty nice to me. And we'll cover them up and we'll let them rise. Um, I don't want my bread to be like poof, right? So I let it rise to just like the rim of the pan. And then we're going to get some oven springs. So it'll be just above the pan. If you let it rise too much, when you get oven spring, then it's up here, right? I want to get sandwich size slices. So we're going to let this rise again and we'll be back.
So it's been about 30, 45 minutes. We've done the second rise. I let them rise up to about this stage. We're gonna put them in the oven. It's gonna get a nice oven spring and we'll have a good size loaf. So it's gonna be in the oven about 30, 40 minutes. We will know when it's done, when it's nice and brown. And when you thump on it, it, it has a hollow sound. Maybe like five minutes, 10 minutes before it's done, we're gonna brush these with butter. It's gonna give it a little bit of shine. If you want a really shiny loaf, give it a um, egg wash, egg with a little bit of water, spray it on, or brush it on here before you put it in the oven and you'll get a really shiny loaf. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna butter it about five, 10 minutes before we take it out of the oven. So when these loaves are done, we'll be back. So I'm gonna put a little bit of butter on these and they're gonna be delicious. Have a little bit of blowout on that side, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, they look so good. My buzzer just went off, but these aren't quite done. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more time. So the bread's out of the oven, so let's de-pan them. Ah, they look fantastic. Ah, I smashed that one a little bit. Oh my gosh. Look at that, ah, they look beautiful. So this is exactly how I like it because I don't want this big, huge loaf where the pieces won't fit into the toaster, right? These are perfect. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is beautiful. Homemade bread. So weighing definitely, um, gives us an advantage that every time we make this bread, it will come out the same. Um, these, are, these are beautiful loaves. Wow. <laughs> I can't wait to take a slice. Now remember, cool this bread all the way down until it's nice and cool. Otherwise it will, um, it'll just, it'll be hard to slice and it'll be doughy. So, Make sure they're completely cold, then slice them. It's very difficult to wait for that, but you will like the results better if you wait. So we're gonna let these completely cool. I'll put some pictures, um, what they look like sliced, and um, we're gonna enjoy us some homemade bread, right? So cooks, the baker's percentage method works really well. Um, we will be going over Baker's percentage even more because I'm just learning the technique. So as I improve, I will, um, I will give you that information as well. Um, wow. They look amazing. If you like videos like this, please subscribe below. Also give me a comment and a like and come check me out on social media. On Facebook, you can catch me at facebook.com slash groups slash Amy Learns to Cook. On Pinterest and Twitter, you can catch me at Amy Learns to Cook. And on Instagram, I'm at Cookin' with Amy. <laughs> wow, these look amazing. <laughs>